There are more than 290 fascinating moons known to exist in the solar system, the majority of which orbit the gas giant planets Jupiter and Saturn. Our planet Earth only contributes the moon to this list, but since the 19th century, there have been a number of intriguing announcements from certain astronomers claiming to have discovered a new moon on Earth. For instance, the French astronomer Frederick Pti announced in 1846 that he had observed a second moon. Although his discovery gained a lot of attention at the time, it was quickly discounted by his peers, primarily because he placed it at a distance equivalent to the height of commercial aircraft. German scientist Dr. George Valla claimed in 1898 to have discovered not only a second moon but also a system of smaller moons orbiting Earth. However, his discovery could not be verified and was widely disregarded. Even Clyde Tamo, the man who discovered Pluto, investigated the possibility of a second moon but later declared in a report in 1859 that he had not found anything. So based on these previous attempts, it seems Earth really does only have one moon. Or does it because there is a far more interesting answer that implies our planet has had many moon-like objects over the years and that it currently has far more than you might think you're watching V101 Space. My name's Rob, and if you enjoy my videos, then remember to subscribe and tap the notification. Bell to never miss a upload when Earth first formed around 4.5 billion years ago as far as we know it had no moons, but that soon changed when according to the giant impact hypothesis a Mars-sized protoplanet nicknamed Thea collided with the young Earth. Causing large chunks of debris to be blasted out into space, this orbiting material eventually coalesced and formed the magnificent moon we see today. Some astronomers have speculated however that there may have been a companion moon very early on. In Earth's history, an impact with this other moon may help explain how the moon's near side is low and flat and is dominated by volcanic scars whereas the far side is mountainous and deeply cratered however however other processes can also account for these. Observations so the other moon idea is still hypothetical it seems the moon is our only permanent natural satellite but despite the previous fraudulent mistaken or failed attempts to find a second moon over the last few decades other. Mysterious objects have been discovered in orbit around the Earth in 1991, for example, a small object was spotted that seemed at first like it might be an old piece of NASA's Apollo hardware, but further examination indicated that it was of natural origin. The mysterious object that became known as a sort of second moon of Earth at the time was called 1991 VG and wasn't anything close to the moon we are so familiar with. In fact, it was only reported to be a mere 10 mm in diameter, but it was the first of its kind observed to be gravitationally bound to the Earth at least for a short period, making it a mini-moon it soon became clear however that 1991 VG was a temporary moon as it only orbited Earth for a few months it became one. Of only a few temporary satellites ever discovered, so could it be that Frederick P. and Dr. George Valla, who spent years searching for new elusive moons of Earth, were on to something could they have discovered temporary moons possibly the earliest known mention of? A temporary moon occurred in 1913 when an odd and still unexplained parade of meteors lit up the night sky over Canada, the northeastern United States, all the way down to, to Brazil. The origin of the event called the Great Meteor Procession of 1913 is still a mystery. However, many astronomers theorize that it could have been a short-lived natural satellite of Earth, a temporary second moon that's partly burnt up in Earth's atmosphere. These momentary moons tend to be small objects which have been captured by the gravitational field of our planet, and so have become our planet's natural satellite, but unlike other moons will eventually either leave its orbit or collide with Earth, however temporary mini-moons aren't the only things orbiting us it seems. Because in 1961 a report announced the existence of so-called ghost moons, the ghost moons which are also called Kordolinsky clouds were report reported as dust clouds too faint to see with the unaided eye that orbited the Earth on the same. Path as the moon for nearly 60 years, ghost moons remained a matter of controversy until in 2018 when they were confirmed to exist. The clouds themselves are enormous, nearly nine times wider than Earth according to the study and are made up of individual particles estimated to measure just a micrometer across sunlight reflecting of these particles make them glow ever so slightly, but they are extremely difficult to see. Although ghost moons are fascinating, they are also extremely tenuous and they hardly seem to qualify as moons even though they do orbit the Earth. However, there are also many other space rocks that appear to orbit the Earth but that are more affected by the Sun's gravity. These are called quasi-satellites or quasi-moons. They do not follow Earth's 
orbit, but they do take 365 days to orbit the Sun just like our planet making them appear to be in orbit despite being mostly outside of Earth's gravitational influence then we have Earth's Trojans which again do not necessarily orbit the Earth but instead move along the same path just in front or just behind in locations called range points. These are places in our solar system where the gravitational pull of any two planetary bodies as well as the motion of their orbit combine to create an equilibrium. They are points in space that are gravitationally stable objects that we send to these locations. They either tend to stay there naturally or can be kept there with minimal energy because the forces are in balance. The James Webb Space Telescope is the most well-known example of how NASA has utilized these longitudes. It circles the Sun at Earth's range point number two, which enables the telescope to maintain its orbit around the Sun while staying in alignment with Earth while using very little fuel. Only two Earth Trojans have ever been discovered, both in range point four, and although they are small, one being only 400 m across and the other around one kilometer across. They may become fairly significant to us in the future because they could be ideal places to build bases for an advanced exploration of the solar system or they could even be a great source of resources. They would be attractive targets for fast, low-budget robotic space probes, possibly making them logical places to run early experiments with asteroid mining since tests could be sent up and retrieved much more quickly than would be possible for a mission to say the asteroid oid belt for generations. Many astronomers have suggested the possibility that Earth may have more than one moon, and although we now know that the moon is our only permanent natural satellite, we also know that there are many, many moons out there that come and go, and that one day it may also have the imprints of an astronaut's boot on its surface as well. While there is only one moon, there are of course millions of objects orbiting the Earth. These include anthropogenic material including rockets, satellites, and space junk, as well as smaller pieces of rock. But very occasionally, the Earth's gravity temporarily captures small natural space rocks. These are sometimes referred to as mini-moons. Unfortunately, while the term planet has a clear definition, there is no strict definition of a moon. We can either say that there is one moon around Earth, or more than 160 million moons. Scientists still don't know why the gas giants have rings, but they think it could be because they formed in the outer solar system. Rocky planets formed in the inner area of our solar system, which is why they were more protected from potential impacts and collisions that might have formed rings around them. Or the reason is that bigger planets have a larger volume which allows a ring system to remain stable. Some scientists think our planet did have a ring system a long time ago. In its early stage, a Mars-sized object hit the Earth, and this probably resulted in a dense ring of debris. But its ring system pretty soon coalesced, and that's the way our moon was formed. More than 10 years ago, in 2011, astronomers found a huge water vapor cloud about 12 billion light years away from our planet. This cloud is the oldest source of water that we know of. It dates back to when the universe was only 1.6 billion years old. Now it's 13.8 billion years old. This unusual cloud is also the biggest source of water that we know of. It holds 140 trillion times the amount of water the Earth contains in its oceans. Enormous. The cool thing is this vapor cloud is kinda feeding a black hole. It may contain enough gases such as carbon monoxide to help its black hole grow even six times bigger than it is now. We all know the Earth has one moon, but there are two more asteroids 3753 Kruthn, 2002 AA29 locked into co-orbital orbits with our planet. The first one doesn't really circle around the Earth but has some sort of a synchronized orbit with the planet which is why it looks like it's following the Earth in a stable orbit, while in reality, it has its own specific path around the Sun. The other one, 2002 AA29, follows a horseshoe orbit around our planet. Its specific path brings this asteroid closer to us every 95 years. You'd expect Neptune to be an extremely cold and dark place. After all, it's an ice giant 2.8 billion miles away from the Sun. There's not too much sunlight there, so noon on Neptune is similar to twilight on our planet. But this ice giant appears to be creating its own heat. To be precise, 2.6 times more heat than it gets from the sun. This probably has to do with all the pressure near the planet's core. It builds and releases hydrogen which keeps Neptune's center at a crazy temperature of 9300 F. But its atmosphere is still quite chilly. It ranges from about minus 240 F to minus 330 F. What shape do you think of when someone mentions storms? 
probably long ovals of hurricanes and conical tornadoes. But that's something we see on Earth. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you later.